so let's look at an example of this. Suppose this is my data set, uh, the points scattered in two-dimensional space. I'm going to assume that I'm using Euclidean distance to measure the distance between uh, data points. And I'm also going to assume that I take, uh, that I do a single link clustering, which basically means that if I have two clusters, I look for two nearest neighbors within the clusters and use that as a distance. And we'll talk about what that means on the next slide. Uh, but for now, so uh, let's just look at what this is going to do. So this is my data set, and we're using Euclidean distance. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find two points that are closest to each other and merge them into a cluster. So in this case, the points that are closest looks like uh, A and B, right? So I'm going to merge A and B uh, into the same cluster. And as I'm merging them in the 2D space, I'm also going to build a tree bottom up. Right. I have the individual data points all lined up here, and what I've done is I'm merging A and B, and the height of this arc uh, corresponds to the distance. Right. So the longer the distance between the clusters that I'm merging, uh, the higher the arc is going to be. So for now, I've just merged A, um, a and B. Okay. So the next two points that are closest to each other are um, J and K. So I'm merging them, and they get merged with a slightly higher uh, distance because they're slightly further apart. Um, then C and D, again, slightly higher distance. Um, and then uh, the next pair that seems closest together is B and D. Right? Those are the points that are the closest together. When I merge B and D, what I'm doing is I'm not actually merging two points into a cluster. I'm now merging two clusters. Right? I had a cluster containing AB and a cluster containing CD. And now when I put a link between B and D, I'm merging those two clusters into one big cluster that contains A, B, C, and D um, all together. Right? And that arc corresponds to the merging of the two clusters. Now I have one cluster that has all the uh, A, B, C, D in there. Okay, um, I will continue. Uh, so next I'm going to merge E into that big cluster. Um, at the next iteration, H and I will get merged. And then... Uh, M and N, and then um, J, K, and H, I get merged into one cluster. And uh, you'll notice that the arcs are becoming higher and higher because the distance um, between the things that I'm merging, uh, I'm merging things that are further and further away from each other. So if I continue doing that, eventually I will connect the entire graph. Uh, so now I've got... Uh, everything is connected into one component, and on the left, I have a complete dendrogram. So that is the tree that represents a sequence of merging decisions that my algorithm made. Right? So at this point, at this distance threshold, whatever that distance happen to, happens to be, all the points are connected into one big uh, cluster. And that cluster has two subclusters, you know, one of them containing points A through N and another one containing point um, L, uh, which happens to be uh, very far away from everything else. <clears throat> um, so that's what you get out of a hierarchical clustering procedure. If you wanted to turn that into a flat clustering, so if you wanted to get a fixed number of clusters out of that, uh, all you would do is you would find a distance threshold uh, at which you're going to cut that tree, cut that dendrogram. So, for example, if I decided that um, any distance above that red dotted line um, shouldn't be connected, uh, this will cut a dendrogram and I will end up with one, two, three, four, five clusters. And the five clusters correspond to the areas uh, circled. Right? So I'm going to get two big clusters, one with A through E, one with K through M, uh, and then three points that didn't fall into any of one of the clusters. And if I picked a different threshold, I would end up with a different clustering. So one way to think about hierarchical clustering is, uh, yes, it gives you a, um, an ontology, a hierarchy of your data, or you could also think of it as uh, you get a representation of a data where you can take a parameter, a distance threshold, move it up and down, and end up with different uh, numbers of clusters. Right. Um, and of course, uh, there is no good way to tell which number of clusters is the right number of clusters, but you could use uh, you could try to, if you, if you had to make the decision, you would use the same tricks that we had for k-means, right? So you look at the scree plot. You would plot the distance, the merge distance, as a function of a number of clusters, and then maybe look for big drops uh, in that distance, or maybe look for the elbow point uh, where, um, uh, 
where the distances were decreasing quickly and then stopped uh, decreasing.